Hey guys, today we are going to talk about six card prices, which are very expensive and they keep ticking up. These would be ideal reprints. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing a set of Horizon or Horizon Canopy. Uh, this is from Future Sight, so we don't have the ones for other lands yet, I believe. Uh, other colors. So we only have the green and white one, which is 90 plus dollars, right? I would love to see one for each ally color. I would love to see one for each enemy color. I think that would be a fascinating land cycle and quite a valuable one to boot. So I'm sad to see that Ixlan, we get the buddy lands or the check lands again for the 18th time probably. And something as beautiful and useful as Horizon Canopy is still being left unused and it's $90 now. It obviously has playability in EDH as well as modern. It's a good card. It does get you to draw a card in case that there's too much land and the life lost in those formats because it's faster is not as important. So love the card, but I would love to see the ally and the enemy versions of it and maybe a standard set as well as a reprint. A $90 land is just a little too much for my personal preference and it is something screaming, reprint me, reprint me. Uh, so outside the next card, the rest of them will be probably able to be reprinted. Nico Boles. Uh, Nico Boles has an interesting price graph. He has been ticking up as of late. Uh, one of the things about Nico Boles is he is tricolor. That does not bode well for most planeswalkers because that means you have to play blue, black, and red, which is not something that people want to do. The question is, is the land, is the mana base or the land base good enough to support a tricolor card? Now, yes, he costs seven, so by the time you are you have seven land in play or you have some type of mana acceleration, you probably have the what type of land you need. But the question is, forcing people to be tricolor at least, maybe they can be four or five color, does the land base support every other card? And the there's no worse feeling than have needing one blue, but you don't have any blue, and you cannot sequence play cards in a sequence that makes sense that can help you survive. Nico Bolas will be an interesting one. I think the lands are not strong enough to support that type of deck. I could be wrong, and some of the lands do seem to be tricolor in. I don't know, like we will see, but tricolor planeswalkers have typically not done well. Like Sharkon, the dragon speaker, was tricolor and that didn't see any play. It's just very hard, very, very hard to force people to play those colors, and splashing is difficult too. Next, another card that I believe should be reprinted is Goryo's Vengeance from Betrayers of Kamigawa. This card has steadily snuck up to $46 without anyone really looking. I mean, yes, we know, I know it's a good deck. And it is an interesting reanimation strategy. However, uh, overall, I'm not, you know, as a rare, I again, this was before Mythics, $46. There are still very excellent options at for Iconic Masters or even a new set. Yes, it's kind of hard to reprint this in a new set because Goryo is probably not in the set. But in EDH or something like that, there's so many different stuff from the vault. I'm still a little puzzled by why we have from the vault flip. Like, what cards could we possibly need? You know what I would love from the vault reanimation? Right, and you grab one of these, you grab the reanimate, and you're good. I mean, there's the value right there. But from the vault flip, like, I, I just cannot see the value unless, like, you're playing Jace Vinge Prodigy and then you put, like, some other stuff. But then, like, why would you have the San Diego Comic Con stuff if you were just going to put Jason there? Questions, questions. Uh, so I love this card, but at $46, it does, it definitely needs a reprint. I can probably title this Nico Boles and Cards That Need to Be Reprinted. Maybe I'll title that. Um, 
yeah. All right, talking about reprints, uh, we have this reprint from Conspiracy, and it is a seven, eight dollar card. Conspiracy and Conspiracy 2, Take the Crown, has a lot of incredibly powerful and potent cards in it. I think the set is underrated and not opened, and I think that has to do with more of the print run being so large and like never ending than it has with the card power. Uh, there is wallet fatigue. Uh, people are, I mean, Conspiracy is a new invention, and then we not got Conspiracy 2, and then we got the Masterpiece set, which is kind of like a new set. And then we got from the vaults still going on. I, I thought they canceled from the vault, but what was what was the last from the vault? Was it from the vault angels? Was the last one? I don't know, but I thought they canceled all the from the vaults because they're not like a great product anymore. Uh, they used to be a product where a store can sell it for a lot more, or they can ideally use it for prize support. And I do have a big complaint about my local game store. I'm not going to call them out by name. But uh, we went there with uh, Amy, no, not Amy, Isabel. Isabel and I went to two local game stores, and we'll probably make a video about it, about her feelings. Uh, they're two very different stores. Uh, we're trying to find a place to play pre-release for Hour of Devastation. And yes, he says he wants to do it. Um, so we'll see, right? If we're going to do it, we'll probably do the midnight one. I, I feel like that's the actual one that you want to do. So next, uh, Doxies, uh, Lorwyn. This card has been ticking up. I do want to take time and point out the foil is almost six hundred dollars. <laughs> oh man, um, artwork does matter, and if you have any doubt about that, this is the card I can point you to and say yes, the artwork in this one is a lot more beautiful. It's a lot more iconic than the Pharaohs. Thought Siege, which I think is kind of ugly. I mean, I, it's not bad, and I do like it, but it's not six hundred dollars either. If you have a card and it's very powerful, you need to get the most expensive version of that card, which traditionally has been the original foil. And why is that the case? Well, the original was probably printed in lower supply due to the time. And the artwork has been more iconic via people playing it, their decks, before the reprint. I like it. Uh, I think this is a way to do it. Uh, you can make uh, cards with inferior artwork and just reprint it that way. I mean, Doxies, this is still a very expensive card because of the artwork, because it is original. You're not hitting collectors, right? If Let's say we got rid of the reserve list and we made all the dual lands like playable but they were really ugly or they were like 3d and like just really a different design and people didn't like them would that really reduce the price of the regular dual lands i don't think so maybe by a tiny bit because people would always be like oh this is traditional artwork tundra with the caribou is it caribou or moose i've never actually looked too closely but anyway Let's end with a funny story of uh, this buyout. <laughs> Clearly a buyout. It went from, looks like 10 cents. <laughs> what is it? Like a, well, in Europe, it's still 92 cents. So let's assume it's 92 cents all the way up to $231. Artificial buyouts are really easy to f figure out sometimes. Sometimes it's a lot harder, but this one is a lot easier. And... It doesn't actually take that much money to do an artificial buyout. Uh, this is probably this buyout probably took less than four hundred dollars to do on a card that there's there's not that many copies of. Rampant Growth took okay EDH, and I, this artwork is gorgeous, right? But it's not like Thoughtseize, not at all, right? Not even close. Not like a foil original Thoughtseize, and it's not even to the point that I would. I would assign this card probably two to five dollars, maybe five dollars if you're really lucky and people actually want to buy it from you. But artificial buyouts are interesting. I might do another experiment soon. Uh, I always like to do experiments with Homelands. I don't know why. I've always considered Homelands the worst set in Magic history. Like it's really bad, but 
it's kind of funny because there's cards on the reserve list that are really, really bad. Apocalypse Chime being one of them, uh, which is just a terrible card. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.